Good afternoon, and welcome to Skyworks Solutions Second Quarter Fiscal Year 2021 Earnings Call. This call is being recorded. At this time, I will turn the call over to Mitch Haas, Investor Relations for Skyworks. Mr. Haas, please go ahead. Thank you, Rob. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Skyworks Second Fiscal Quarter 2021 Conference Call. With me today are Liam Griffin, our President and Chief Executive Officer, and Chris Denisal, our Chief Financial Officer. Before we begin, I would like to remind everyone that our discussion will include statements relating to future results and expectations that are or may be considered forward-looking statements. Please refer to our earnings press release and recent SEC filings, including our annual report on Form 10-K, for information on certain risks that could cause actual outcomes to differ materially and adversely from any forward-looking statements made today. Additionally, the results and guidance we will discuss include non-GAAP financial measures consistent with our past practice. Please refer to our press release within the Investor Relations section of our company website for complete reconciliation to GAAP. With that, I'll turn the call to Liam. Thanks, Mitch, and welcome, everyone. Skyworks delivered another record quarter with strong year-over-year growth in revenue, margins, and earnings per share for Q2. We continue to leverage our expansive technology reach and deep customer engagements, spanning both mobile and broad markets to capture the exploding demand for connectivity. And with our planned acquisition of the infrastructure and automotive business of Silicon Labs, we expect to accelerate that momentum further. Here are a few highlights in the quarter. We delivered revenue of $1.17 billion, 53% above Q2 of last year. Our broad markets portfolio generated record revenue of $385 million, 67% growth over the same period last year. We posted a new Q2 record for earnings per share of $2.37, representing a year-over-year increase of 77% and demonstrating strong operating leverage. Importantly, we drove $616 million in operating cash flow, a quarterly record, a new quarterly record for the company. Looking ahead, the technology bar has never been higher as billions of daily interactions move online, spawning a growing set of use cases from remote work, virtual education, touchless commerce, cognitive audio, machine-to-machine communication, and autonomous transport. These advances rely on radical upgrades in speed, latency, and reliability, with comparable requirements for power efficiency and smaller form factors. For nearly two decades, Skyworks has prepared for this opportunity, investing in innovative technologies, human capital, and manufacturing infrastructure, positioning us to capitalize on the secular global transition. Notably, our strong cash generation fortifies our ability to fund deep investments in technology, fabs, and manufacturing scale. Further, our proven and flexible model is squarely aligned with the complex demands of our customers. Our demonstrated operational expertise allowed us to drive yet another strong quarter of design win execution. In mobile, we expanded the reach of our Sky 5 portfolio across premium and mid-tier 5G smartphone launches at Samsung, Oppo, Vivo, Xiaomi, and other leading OEMs. In the IoT space, we secured wins across a diverse set of customers. Specifically, we partnered with Netgear to deploy Wi-Fi 6 and 6E routers, launch Wi-Fi 6 gateways at Deutsche Telekom, Nokia, and Altice, ship home security solutions to Xfinity, captured design wins with Google Nest, and we delivered low-latency cognitive audio systems, powering wireless gaming headsets at Microsoft and Sony. Moving to the industrial space, we delivered IoT modules to QuickTel and Jamalto. In an infrastructure, we leveraged our wireless portfolio to deploy MIMO base stations with Nokia and Ericsson. And finally, in automotive, we ramped telematics and driver assist platforms with Volkswagen, LG, and GM OnStar. Moving forward, we see a multi-year technologically technology evolution with our aperture widening from smartphones, industrial, 
to automotive to an expanding set of IoT devices. Today, we support a global network that extends to over 20 billion interconnected devices, spawning a new class of ecosystems, from autonomous transport to smart cities and robotics. Skyworks is fueling this dramatic shift with our unique capabilities, integrating not only 5G, but other critical protocols, including high-performance Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and precision GPS. Finally, Skyworks is well positioned to win with deep customer relationships established over 20 years, experience across multiple technology transitions, a technically seasoned and talented workforce, and an efficient cash flow engine that funds a pipeline of market leading solutions while providing strong returns to our shareholders. With that, I will turn the call over to Chris for discussion of Q2 and our outlook for Q3. Thanks, Liam. Skyworks posted another quarter of strong financial results, delivering record Q2 revenue of $1.172 billion, exceeding the midpoint of our guidance. Total revenue grew 53% year-over-year, based on early 5G adoption, as well as strong demand for our broad market solutions. Mobile revenue grew 47% year-over-year, largely driven by widespread content increases as 5G phones are ramping across smartphone OEMs worldwide. Broad market revenue grew further in Q2 to an all-time record of $385 million. This reflects revenue growth of 67% over Q2 of last year, benefiting from a diverse set of use cases, including the adoption of technologies such as Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, 5G wireless infrastructure, and automotive, along with the continued positive momentum in our audio solutions business. Gross profit in the quarter was $595 million, resulting in a gross margin of 50.8%, up 60 basis points year over year. Operating expenses were $155 million, or 13.2% of revenue, demonstrating spending discipline while continuing our strategic investments to drive growth. We generated $440 million of operating income, translating into an operating margin of 37.6%, a 510 basis points improvement over Q2 of last year. Other income was 1 million and our effective tax rate was 10.5%, resulting in net income of 395 million or a net income margin of 33.7%. Execution on both gross and operating margins drove record Q2 diluted earnings per share of $2.37 beating the guidance by $0.03 cents and an increase of 77% when compared to fiscal Q2 of 2020. Turning to the balance sheet and cash flow, second fiscal quarter cash flow from operations was $616 million, a quarterly record for Skyworks. Capital expenditures were $141 million, resulting in a record $475 million of free cash flow translating into a strong free cash flow margin of 41%. We paid 83 million in dividends, and given the recently announced acquisition of the infrastructure and automotive business of Silicon Labs, which we expect to close in the September quarter, we have temporarily suspended our share repurchase program. Now let's move on to our outlook for Q3 of fiscal 2021. Based on robust demand for connectivity solutions in mobile and broad markets, we expect continued momentum and year-over-year growth in the June quarter. Specifically, in the third fiscal quarter of 2021, we anticipate revenue to be between $1.075 billion and $1.125 billion, with non-GAAP diluted earnings per share of $2.13 at the midpoint of our revenue range. This translates into year-over-year revenue growth of 49% at the midpoint of the revenue range and year-over-year non-GAAP diluted earnings per share growth of 70%. 
Gross margin is projected to be in the range of 50.25% to 50.75%. We expect operating expenses to be between 159 and 161 million. Below the line, we anticipate roughly 1.5 million in other income and a tax rate of approximately 10.5%. We expect our diluted share count to be approximately 167 million shares. And with that, I'll turn the call back over to Liam. Thanks, Chris. Skyworks is on track to deliver record results for fiscal 2021, clearly demonstrating the value of our technologies as we address an increasingly broader landscape of impactful customers and applications. Further, the pending acquisition of the INA business fits squarely with our strategic priorities to expand our market reach, accelerate revenue diversification, and drive industry-leading profitability and cash flow. In parallel, Skyworks is solidifying its global leadership, technology breadth, and vast operational scale, powering the connected experience in mobile, industrial, automotive, enterprise, and other emerging applications. That concludes our prepared remarks. Operator, we can open the line to questions. Thank you. As a reminder, to ask a question, you will need to press star one in your telephone. To withdraw your question, please press the pound or hash key. And given time constraints, please limit yourself to one question and one follow-up. And your first question comes from the line of Carl Ackerman from Cowan & Company. Your line is open. Hey, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, gentlemen. Um, if I, you know, if I could, um, you know, one of your RF peers who reported last evening spoke about new content wins across the Android supply chain with its integrated modem. And, you know, as a result, I think some investors have concluded, you know, what's good for them is perhaps bad for you in terms of your opportunity um, in, in certain areas of the, of the RF supply chain. And so um, I know you're probably limited in discussing specific OEM wins, but I was hoping you could discuss your conviction in RF content gains across the mobile market, uh, that would be helpful uh, as we think about your, you know, uh, the, the growth trajectory beyond the June quarter. Thank you. Sure, good question. Well, we are very bullish about our outlook in RF and other elements in our portfolio. Uh, you can see the results that we just reported are very, very strong, substantial double-digit returns and, and compares across, across the space. We have an incredible view going forward. We have a, a, a rich set of technologies that we continue to, to grow. Uh, we're expanding the aperture of the componentry that we put in with these devices. We're leveraging our integrated solution, Sky5, that brings in filtering, bulk acoustic wave, core gallium arsenide, and other elements to provide a turnkey solution for our customers. And we've been doing this for years. This is not new. Uh, what is new is the outlook that we have when we start to see 5G really pick up the complexities in 5G and having a full, a full system solution as we have at Skyworks to put our customers in place to win. So we feel really good about it. We always have competition. There, there, there's no change there at all. But if you look at how we play and how we, how we work with our customers and the technologies that we deliver in the, in the ways that our customers want to consume it, it's a recipe that works. Yep, no, I appreciate that. <laughs> if if I may, uh, you know, in broad markets, uh, very, very strong results. Uh, but with results as strong, the elephant in the room is about sustainability. And, you know, some semis across the supply chain have spoken about uh, some modest inventory restocking at non-distribution channels addressing consumer electronics. And so um, perhaps you could discuss your lead times here and what, proactive measures you may be taking that could limit any double ordering uh, for your Wi-Fi and auto solutions. Thank you. Sure. We have a very, uh, you know, close look in, at, at the pipeline and, and, and the supply chain, of course. So one of the things that I'm sure you know about Skyworks is that we're vertically integrated. So, you know, we're building product in our own factory. We're customizing in our own factory from filter to gallium arsenide to packaging and tests. All of that is done in-house. So there's two things there. Number one, it, it, it mitigates substantially mitigate some of the risks that we're seeing with the overall chip supply chain uh, constraints. There's still some, but we, we're going to fare much better than others. But on the other end, you know, we, we are very close to uh, our customers and the channel. 
you know, we try to keep that as lean as possible so we get the real demand, the natural demand, and, and that's the way we want it. Uh, the diversity in broad markets, though, is a theme that we should think about here because we really are expanding the aperture. It's, it's multiple technologies, whether it's Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi 6 or Bluetooth or GPS. But then there's a broadening set of customers that, that, have, that have stepped up and joined the Skyworks uh, Design Win team. So there's a lot of diversity within the broad market portfolio, uh, but there's also a lot of technology differentiation that allows us to gain share. And we're looking forward to continuing to put up you know, above market results in that category. Your next question comes from the line of Blaine Curtis from Barclays. Your line is open. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for my question. Just want to ask on, on gross margins. And then as part of this, I know you were catching up in March after a very strong December, particularly with one customer. So maybe related, but kind of two parts there. Just are, how are you in the process of catching up? And if you just comment on the gross margin, it, it is down a bit in June. Obviously, revenue is up 50%. You've been kind of the 50 in change range for a while. What's the drivers for the margin to be down in June? Yeah, uh, Blaine, I'll, I'll uh, maybe start with the gross margin question. First of all, I was pleased with uh, our actual result at 50.8 in uh, fiscal Q2, up 60 basis points on a year over year, despite a somewhat challenging and tight supply chain environment, as you're well aware. Uh, we are guiding here 50 and a half at the midpoint for fiscal Q3, which is up 40 basis points year over year. Uh, it's slightly down from Q2 uh, on slightly lower revenue as we are going into our slowest seasonal quarter of the year. Uh, but we do, of course, expect uh, further gross margins improvement in the second half of the year as we start ramping, as we usually do, in the September and the December quarter. Thanks. And then maybe just... The, the, the first part of the question, just catching up on the customers, just any additional color as, as to how you are in that process uh, into June? Um, yeah, no, I mean, this is a, uh, uh, an environment where there is very strong demand across the board. Um, and uh, as Liam pointed out here as well, we've done really well. Um, uh, meeting that demand despite the tight supply environment. Uh, we control that through our own factories. We've been putting in a lot of capacity proactively because we knew that this big, strong cycle with 50% year-over-year growth was coming towards us as we're moving into 5G. And so we've been executing well. Now, we do buy some stuff from third parties, and, and that's a little bit tight, but given the size and scale that Skyworks have, uh, and, and the strong team that we have, we've been executing pretty well there. Your next question comes from the line of Chris Caso from Raymond James. Your line is open. Yes, thank you. Um, your first question uh, is in regard to the, uh, the, the China OEM business. Could you describe uh, what's going on there? Uh, you know, we heard MediaTek uh, report earlier this week. Uh, it was a really strong first half. Their, their guidance seemed to suggest some flattening out uh, into the second half, uh, you know, how is that uh, uh, going for your business? Sure, Chris. Well, obviously, the, uh, the China market is very important to the, the overall ecosystem, and, and we are doing very well in that space. Uh, you know, again, players like Oppo, Vivo, Xiaomi, and then MediaTek, a whole other angle, which we, we've been working with MediaTek for years, a, a very strong, you know, baseband provider, and, and we have unique technologies that wrap around their core baseband and we've been doing that for quite a while so we still feel very good about about china it is lifted off first in the 5g landscape of course you know there's a tremendous amount of opportunity between now and the next four or five years or more as we populate and and, and drive uh, subscriptions in 5g but with the media tech side we we're gaining market share at media tech and their platform is getting stronger it's more powerful more potent uh, and it is one of the leading platforms when we look at APAC. And again, populating some of these brands uh, and also hitting some, some, some new markets as well. So the MediaTek relationship we have is outstanding. It's a technically driven relationship. We know the company. We've been working with them for years. And, and those solutions often port portfolio out in the Android ecosystem with the names that we mentioned, the OVX, et cetera. So 
Uh, we've got a very good handle on that. And, and the other thing, Chris, here is that these customers really like the fact that we grow our own technologies, develop you know, our own packaging and tests, can get very, very flexible, can integrate in a Sky 5 solution that makes it very easy for them to go to market. So there's some unique elements in the Skywork strategy that go beyond just kind of the parts, right? So that's always been a, a key play for us. And, and players like, like MediaTek, that's, that's an ideal solution for them. Thank you. Um, as a follow-up, a uh, follow-up question is on, uh, on OPEX. And, uh, you know, it's up moderately on a year-on-year -year basis, but obviously up a lot less than, than the revenue growth rate. Um, and, and, and not necessarily talking for the short term, but, you know, over the next couple of years, uh, you know, what, what, what's the plan in OPEX? Do you invest, you know, some of the, the cash flow that you're getting now, you know, from a substantially higher rate? Um, you know, is, is this OPEX level that you're at right now uh, sufficient enough to kind of drive the, the, the sort of growth that you guys want to see? Yes, uh, Chris. Um, I mean, we've been talking about that a lot. Uh, the, we will continue to invest in our business, and we're a technology leader. We want to continue uh, to expand our reach uh, into that very rich ecosystem, and we are not hesitating there. So at, at, at the flip side, of course, we are very efficient in how we do it and what we do. Right? Our total OPEX is running on or about 13% to revenue, um, that's, a, that's an, an area, a zip code, where we want to keep it. Uh, obviously, there are, if you look at it, during the year, there are seasonal swings as the, as the revenue goes up and down. But longer term, in that somewhat like 13% to revenue, uh, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a good place to be. Yeah, and I'll just, just to add to that, remember the leverage that we have in our business. I mean, we, we, we are a company that – you know, we're driving a broad market portfolio with, with big dollars and a mobile portfolio. So, you know, our business is, is, is very much focused on that execution, and our design teams know how to develop products that have an incredible, you know, market, market reach. So that's the thesis behind that. And, you know, certainly we're funding R&D to the level it needs to be funded. We know exactly where, we, where we're headed there, and we're investing in aggressively technology investments in our fabs, in our packaging houses, uh, and, and, and really just the platform that we have in Sky 5 as we move forward. So all that kind of weaves together, and you get leverage because these are, these are really strong markets that have, you know, a pretty potent unit uh, curve on them as well. So it, it, part, part of the strategy is, is to really, you know, drive a solution that can then spin off derivatives but still have that same, that same core. So that, that's a unique element at Skyworks, and as Chris said, Having your own fab, having your own manufacturing assembly and test, all of that under under multiple roofs, but our own roofs makes a big difference for us. Your next question comes from the line of Gary Mobley from Wells Fargo Securities. Your line is open. Hey guys, thanks for taking my question. I had a multi-part question to start out with. I, I think when you started the fiscal year, you had a pretty optimistic view on your mobile related revenue tied to the non-IOS community. And my, my question to you is, you know, are, are you at a point in the year now that we're in somewhat of a, a lull that you're able to, um, you know, service those Android smartphone customers to the fullest extent, or are you, you know, really are perhaps being, you know, uh, overextended by, you know, trying to service your largest customer? Yeah, that's a great question, and, and I'll tell you, uh, the, the, the Android ecosystem right now is really strong, and, and you know, we're putting up excellent numbers in that part of the, part of the landscape. So there's no, uh, you know, there were some supply chain hiccups here and there, but we're still executing to a very aggressive path. We've got the demand. We have the technology that's needed, uh, and we're doing that with, with, with in parallel with, you know, great outcomes with our largest customer. Uh, so that's that's definitely moving in the right direction, uh, and it's for the reasons we talked about. We have a great 5G, multi-year, you know, and I mean really multi-year opportunity here for us and others, and and we have a technology curve that we talked about in the prepared remarks. Stuff is getting this is really challenging stuff now, and companies that have invested in R&D and invested in their fabs uh, and work closely with their customers are going to be the winners, and and we're going to be at the top of that list. So we feel really good about that, and and it's 
absolutely our mission to deliver across all the different segments in mobility. Appreciate the color, Liam. And as my follow-up, and I don't want to nitpick here, you know, you guys have been producing some great results, but, you know, you, you, you're – you had a higher mix of broad markets revenue in, in the March quarter, and I think it was pretty substantial, uh, you know, mix upside, you know, for that particular business unit. And, and so my question is, you know, why were you guys not able to deliver, you know, more upsides at the gross margin just given that, you know, higher than expected mix of, of broad markets? Yeah, so the broad market mix in the quarter came in uh, in line with expectations, so there was no... Uh, surprise there. I mean, we did $22 million better than what we guided, but that was somewhat across uh, our uh, full revenue uh, portfolio. So there was no uh, change there. And again, from a gross margin, we were up 60 basis points year over year, despite a challenging supply chain environment, right? There are some uh, increased input costs uh, that, uh, that, that needs to be absorbed. And despite all of that, we continue to uh, demonstrate year-over-year -year gross margin improvements. Your next question comes from a line of Amber Srivastava from BMO Capital Markets. Your line is open. Hi, thank you. Um, Chris, on the uh, margin front, when should we expect the uh, input cost increase that uh, resulted due to COVID? And, and, and then uh, I had a follow-up after that, please. I mean, there are already input costs, right? This is not new. Uh, the tightness in the supply chain um, has been there now for uh, several months, uh, and so it, it's there. Of course, again, we're working it really hard. We have long-term relationships with our suppliers. Uh, we have the size and scale uh, there as well. And, um, and again, the team is, uh, is working it really hard, and uh, I think we'll definitely see some uh, improvements there. Uh, going into the second half of the calendar year. Okay, and with, with respect to to second half calendar year, Liam, maybe a question for you. There's no such thing as normal seasonality, but given everything that's going on in the supply chain, what's the best way you could describe for us to, in terms of expectations for the second half um, the, a calendar year that we should expect versus what a normal seasonal year would be? Yeah, sure. I mean, we absolutely expect to grow in the second half. Uh, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there. It's still very early in 5G. The broad market print that we put out, you know, what, what really matters there, if I can't, I can't show, show this to you in the conference call, but if you saw the breadth of customers, the breadth of customers, number one, really, really stepped up, and then the diversity of the technologies that those customers consumed was also a really incredible opportunity for us and, and to be realized. So, you know, that's the important thing. And then you go to the strength in mobility, which will come in the second half. We know what we've won. There were a lot of really difficult, challenging opportunities there that we've been able to win. And, and, and that should be, you know, apparent here in the second half. So there's some stuff happening right now that we're not going not to cover the cover the ball off in broad markets, a lot of diversity with customers, diversity in the technologies we bring, and then in core mobility, uh, the second half of the year we think will be strong, and, and we know what we've won and we know what we've cons consummated in the key designs, uh, and it's, it's all good on that front. Your next question comes from the line of Timothy R. Curry from UBS. Your line is open. Hi, thanks a lot. Um, Chris, I, I, I think your largest customer last quarter, you said, was 70% of revenue. Um, obviously, it was down this quarter, but can you give us a sense of maybe how large it was in March? Uh, the largest customer? Yeah, it was, correct. It was approximately 50% of total revenue. 50, okay, awesome. Thank you much. And then I guess a question on what's assumed in the mix for the June guidance. Um, Typically, broad markets is sort of, you know, I mean, there's not really that strong seasonality in, you know, broad markets, but usually it's up about 10% sequentially in June. Is that about the right assumption for broad markets and that they can net out, you know, mobile to get the mix for June? Right. Also, uh, on total company, we guided June down uh, 6%. Uh, and so when you look at mobile and broad markets, broad markets is going to be, 
flat to slightly down. And then, of course, on the flip side, you have the mobile business. Yeah, and you have a year-over-year -year number that is, you know, 60% year-over-year Q3. Right. So total total business uh, uh, is up 49, 50% on or about, and so broad markets there continue to do really well, uh, up more than 50, closer to 60% on a year-over-year -year basis. Your next question comes from the line of Harsh Kumar from Piper Sandler. Your line is open. Yeah, hey guys, um, sticking to that theme of broad markets, could you maybe <clears throat> help us understand where that strength that you saw, that incremental strength in broad markets, where did it come from? I know you mentioned it was broad, but was it leaning towards any one particular technology or end market? Yeah, it was quite diverse, Harsh, uh, but I would say unique strength in, in higher end Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, uh, a lot of connected home applications that we consummated. Uh, wireless infrastructure has picked up a bit. Nokia and Ericsson, we, we mentioned them in the prepared remarks. Uh, and starting to do a little bit more with automotive as well. So it was uh, you know, a great quarter in broad markets. It's, it's, a, it's the type of output that we're capable of doing consistently and growing consistently. Uh, as I said earlier in the call, the diversity of the customers was really unique for us. So more and more companies that had not been had not been customers of Skyworks are now customers of Skyworks, and we'd love to see that. And, and once we, we establish a beachhead with some of these players, we can do a lot more. So, you know, names you heard today, names like Microsoft and names like Sony, uh, and names like GM and, and OnStar and, and, you know, moving into industrial markets. That's all coming together, and the, and the nice thing is it's using the kinds of it needs, and we, it needs the technology that we have, and we have it ready for them. So it's, uh, it isn't a case where we have to spin up something unique. By and large, the technologies that we have now are ready to go. So we're able to deliver those solutions in Wi-Fi, deliver those solutions in a cellular format, whether it's 5G or otherwise. Uh, we have the technology protocols to address what the customers want. So... And we'll continue to do that. And I think, you know, some of the, the, the impacts that we've seen with the COVID crisis is that the, the, the ability to be flexible and adapt, and we've seen this usage case change where we, we have customers that were not, not interested in some of the things that we did or didn't have a need for it. And now mobility and connectivity has become paramount and critical and essential, and that's driving our business in ways that, you know, we really didn't anticipate. Uh, but we understand it deeply, and, and as we move forward, we're going to continue to develop those, those customers and, and bring the best technologies we can to each, each and every one of their own applications. Hey, Liam, I wanted to – that was really helpful, by the way. I wanted to switch to mobile and ask a longer-term type question. You know, since as long as I've covered you guys for the entire 4G cycle – content increases were, you know, somewhere in the call it seven to ten percent range consistent and, and that was that was always the case. How do you see that cadence for five G? There's a lot more bands, there's a lot of stuff going on, there's, you know, different frequencies being added, spectrum, C band, etc. Is that number a number that is likely to go is that, that content add number on a on a yearly basis, is that a number that's likely to creep up? because of all that 5G brings? Yes, absolutely. And, and it, it really is it's necessary. So if you just think about it at a high level, you know, e even the backward compatibility of the mobile phone today, you still have 4G running completely, and sometimes even 3G. So you have elements of 3G, then 4G, and then you have 5G. We're also extending the spectrum. Or typically, if you looked at a 3G or a 4G phone, you're, you're somewhere between, you know, 700 meg to 1 gig, now we go from one gig to six gig and even higher. So there's new spectrum in the 5G world. There's new challenges. There's new technologies that need to be brought to bear. And then the ability to integrate that in a, in a fungible asset, the delivering that as a complete system that our customers can assimilate, that is really special. And we do that. And, and, and that's back to the comments that Chris and I made about having our own technology, having our own factories, having unique packaging, assembly, and tests to, to really customize a full solution. And the complexity is going up substantially, and the complexity is what drives the content gains. Your next question comes from a line of Craig Hettenbach from Morgan Stanley. Your line is open. 
Yes, thanks. Uh, just going back to broad markets, I know for parts of that business you've been supply chain uh, constrained. Uh, are you catching up or are there still pockets in terms of where you're trying to kind of catch up to demand in broad markets? Sure, Craig. That, that is one area that we are we're, – we're getting there, but there's still some catch-up work to be done. Uh, broad markets is more diverse. It, uh, it's a, it, it's a, you know, a, a set of customers that is, 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 is you know, 10 times broader than what we have in mobile. So to design specifically to each one of those applications is a great opportunity we're pursuing, but there have been a few bumps in supply chain. Uh, as Chris mentioned, we're faring better than most because we do have our own fabs, we have our own assembly and tasks, we can control our destiny for the most part, but there still are a few wrinkles in supply chain that are being ironed out, and you know it does have a slight headwind on on GM and cost. As you, you know, there could be some lack of price reductions by some, with some of our suppliers. There's, you know, logistics issues with next flight outs and things like that. So there's a couple things that pop in that create a bit of a headwind. But uh, but the broad markets business will continue to move, and I think we'll certainly see these supply chain hiccups uh, get ironed out very quickly. Got it. And then just as a follow-up, Liam, any update on some of the BOD design activity that, that you're seeing? Yeah, the BOD, the BOD designs are, are, are doing great. Uh, you know, you could see in the current lineup of phones today across multiple customers, you know, our Sky 5 solution is, is bringing in more and more bulk acoustic wave. There's also some bulk, bulk acoustic wave technologies in, in some of the Wi-Fi engines that we have. And as we start to look out into the second half of the year, uh, you should expect more content underpinned by our own organic, uh, our own organic boss systems uh, as we move forward. So we're feeling really good about it. We've also made the investments in our fab technology to deliver that, to deliver those solutions. So there's a lot of good work that's been done, and we're going to be able to uh, reap the rewards of that as we go forward into the second half and beyond. Your next question comes from the line of Kevin Cassidy from Rosenblatt Securities. Your line is open. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering if you had some visibility into infrastructure deployments, maybe as you go out into the second half of the year, um, in particular maybe the C-band. Um, is that deployments in the antennas uh, coming next, in the second half? Yeah, and that's a great question. A uh, couple things. So first of all, infrastructure had, had been lagging a bit in this whole you know mobility ecosystem and specifically in 5G. So as we mentioned in the in the call, we are starting to see, you know, more energy in rollouts uh, with some of the key players in Europe, the Nokia's and the Ericsson's specifically. And we have great technology there with MIMO solutions, small cell solutions, uh, a lot of the core, you know, recipes that we need in gallium arsenide and other places. So we're, we feel really good about it. It's been it's been slow, but it's starting to pick up. Uh, and it's necessary as you move into 5G. It's necessary as we, we, we build out that spectrum. And then, as you, as you mentioned, the C-band auction uh, is great now because that money has been spent, and the carriers want to deploy you know, more and more. Uh, they basically want to leverage that, 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 that technology as quickly as possible. So the infrastructure is going to pop up a little bit there, and it also could add content opportunities to core mobile device. So... You have a you have a you have a two a two prong approach there with the infrastructure side and we have positions there and then of course when we look at C band and the unique spectrum there there's going to be devices that will need to be navigating and and, and populating uh, that spectrum within the handset so that uh, that's something that's that's starting it's it's been happening but there's a, there's there's definitely lots of room to move on that end. Okay, great for that. Uh, thank you for that answer. Uh, and just uh, for your CapEx spending, can you say, is there anything new in what you're spending it on, or is it mostly just capacity expansion? No, the, the, our CapEx, uh, there's two main drivers there, of course. One is just uh, expanding the capacity as the business is growing at 50% year over year right now, and so we definitely need to support that. But in addition to that, there is a, a, a big part of the CapEx that is technology-related, making the investments in our uh, gallium arsenide power amplifier fabs, um, 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 making the investments in our filter operation, TC saw, and as Liam talked about, the bulk acoustic wave, also in our back-end operation with more complex, higher-performance packaging technologies, 
And so that is really driving a, a differentiated product offering. That's why we win in the marketplace, but, and, and, but we have to support that, of course, with putting up the CapEx dollars in our own fabs. Your next question comes from the line of Harrison Barrett from Arate Research. Your line is open. Hi, thanks for taking my questions. Could we get some color on your share into the China OEMs? Is there an RF product area where you're seeing particular traction, or are you tending to see a broad mix across your addressable content? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the demands in, 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 in APAC have been very solid, very strong, and oftentimes, you know, we have customers that were 3G, 4G, and the lift into 5G is, is actually quite substantial. Some, some of the comments I just made in the, with the last caller, there's unique technologies that are required in 5G that were not in a 4G phone. So we're seeing a lot of that pick up. So beachheads with accounts we're in that have been strong in 3G and 4G now need to augment and extend their content to be a player in 5G. So we're starting to see that happening. It's been building up. Uh, China has a long way to go to, to really match some of the, the premium brands that we see in, 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 in the U.S. and some other countries. But uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of opportunity to grow that technology and grow the business there. Uh, it's also a market that really does value connectivity and mobility. It's a, it's a, it's a core and essential uh, element within that marketplace and in that region. And, you know, we differentiate with our ability to, to offer that complete Sky 5 solution and, and really, you know, remove some of the complexity that our customers may have when they're launching new technologies. Great. And then sort of continuing on that theme, there was a lot of commentary about millimeter wave trans, uh, traction in Asia, I think China particularly, from one of your competitors yesterday. Do you have any updates on your millimeter wave roadmap? Yeah, we're, we're working on millimeter wave, but it is, it's really kind of a narrow slice within, within the mobility architecture right now. So there's, we, we've got some, some work to do on the infrastructure side, but we, we know how to do that. Uh, and we, we've got some investments in the handheld side as well uh, to augment. So we're continuing to drive that. But at the same time, in the core RF, let's say one gig to six gig, the opportunities continue to move. Uh, and the spectrum needed continues to be more and more complex. The C-band auction that was just mentioned is a big driver. Uh, and it's really, you know, that's a technology that you take anywhere. The, the, the challenge with millimeter wave is that you have you know, substantial current consumption needs. Uh, you have a physical size that is, that, is, that is a challenge in a mobile phone. And then you have point-to-point -point interference. So it's a, it's a technology that could have, you know, use in certain environments, you know, walk, going into stadiums or campus environments, uh, unimpeded, of course. Uh, it works, but if you look at what we can do in 5G today with the solutions that we have today and the spectrum that we have today, it's, it's incredible. Uh, the speeds, the performance, the latency, uh, and, and the ability to roam and expand that signal anywhere uh, unimpeded. So it's, it's going to be a challenge, but like anything else, I mean, there's layers in the cake, right? There's, you know, you have your low band, your mid band, your high band, and you could have a, you know, unique spot at the top that, that, that delivers a millimeter wave cycle. So uh, it's all there. We understand it. You know, we, we know how to navigate through it, and we know how to work with our customers to ensure that they get the best solution. And your final question comes from a line of Raji Gill from Needham & Company. Your line is open. Again, Raji Gill, your line is open. Yeah, great, Chris. Uh, uh, thanks for taking my questions. Um, I was wondering if you could um, discuss the linearity in the, in the quarter. I think last quarter it, it started a little bit slower and then accelerated uh, significantly. Wondering how that shaped up uh, uh, this quarter, um, and wondering if you if there's any signs of pull-ins uh, uh, during the quarter. No, so let me first talk about uh, the March quarter. The linearity was just uh, perfect. Um, it, 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 uh, it was evenly spread amongst the three months within the quarter, and uh, of course now in in June we are going through our slowest seasonal quarter. Uh, so somewhat in the middle of the quarter, you hit the bottom, and then you start ramping up, uh, ramping up towards the second half of the calendar year, where, uh, where again, we're very bullish about 
the opportunity there to, to uh, produce strong sequential growth into September and December. And, and Liam, you, you mentioned your, your integrated modular approach, you particularly giving you a, a, an advantage. I'm wondering how you would characterize the, the RF content gains this year versus, say, last year with kind of the, the first initial rollout of the 5G phones. Is this integrated modular approach um, uh, providing kind of more tailwinds in terms of RF content, particularly in kind of the mid-range um, of the market in China? Any color there in terms of how you're leveraging the integrated uh, approach to either gain share or uh, increase RF content? Thank you. Yes, thank you. Great question. Yeah, that, that, this, is, this is exactly why we developed our Sky5 solution. We know how hard it is to deliver a 5G socket with all the bells and whistles that can handle spectrum across the board, uh, handle the complexity of roaming, the size constraints, the current consumption. It's really hard. So we spent a great deal of time creating a solution that makes it very easy for our customers to go to market, although the hard work underneath within the Skyworks cover, the Skyworks module is not easy. So we have the ability to deliver the filtering technology that's needed all the way from SAW to TC SAW to bulk acoustic wave, our own customized gallium arsenide devices, unique assembly and test and packaging in-house. And you know, wrapping that together with a lot of these players that really need that know-how, it, it's been a, a great, great opportunity. This is something that we, we have been thinking about and working on for years. So this is a purpose-built solution. It, it is not something that we just turned on this year. This is something that we've been working on for quite a while. But the higher the complexity that we see in the market and in the handset, the better we do. Uh, and you'll see that across the board. You'll see that with launches this year. You'll see that with phones that are out there now. And the complexity continues to rise. That drives content. And the consumer demand for the technology around mobility just continues to grow. So it's, it's a great market to be in. Uh, but there's a lot of problems to be solved, and that's what really, you know, gets us excited and, and puts us in a position to outperform. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes today's question and answer session. I'll now turn the call back over to Mr. Griffin for any closing comments. Thank you all for participating on today's call. We look forward to talking to you at upcoming conferences during the quarter. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude today's conference call. We thank you for your participation.